Thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest stories in the world of entertainment. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my amazing and interesting co-anchors with me, Ife Omai and Benny Ark. What's up, Elsie? How you doing? Amazing and interesting. Mm. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How you doing? Well, you? Okay. Why are you quiet? How are you doing? I'm okay. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, someone says if Nepal Bill can reach every house, then relief material must reach every family. Um, of course, this um, statement has been amplified by if we're not that, but yes, we're going around and it's been quite funny. I think, I think, um, I see, I see the comic relief in that and also I see the seriousness in that also because Nepal Bill always comes through. They they know the data they know, or no data. They know they know your doorstep. <laughs> and so if, if they have that accurate data to get across to people when it's time for you to pay up your NEPA bills, then maybe the federal government will want to implore those data by the services by, of yeah, yes, to, they to they help are now power holding company. company right. You know, so they can or they can help power distribution. In fact, they can be they can be of great help to the federal government when it comes to that. And so yes, so we for that I think we want to say kudos to them. And so they have a data the federal government doesn't have and they can assess every Nigerian doorstep. So yes, I'm 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 a hundred and one with this um, with the for another, you know. But hey, again I see I see the comic side of, of it. Pe people need laughter. People need to take their mind off the fear, the terror of COVID nineteen is it's putting everyone of us. And subconsciously, um, you wake up, you sleep, you're thinking COVID-19. Yeah. You know? So it's like your predominant thought. And there's something that can actually do to your, to your mental. Mm. You know, um, it, it sends you to a state of frenzy, panic. And it, it's worse off. So mentally already, you're like, you're actually dying. You're not living, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, it's funny when I saw it. I don't think it goes to every house, though. Um, and it doesn't have every family. <clears throat> I know some people who haven't had, like my mom's job, I used to say, they haven't had lights in like two years, three years. But they, they, they've been having <coughs> Nepal bills. No, Nepal bills don't come in. They don't, Nepal doesn't, no, Nepal doesn't oh, okay. see okay. see their area. Mm. Um, but if it, I think what, what, what I can get from what Benny is saying is also is that if they even started with that, if they started with the database that Nepal has, I'm sh surely Nepal has um, housing of those people in the lower um, area, like lower yeah, housing yeah, yeah. housing mm -hmm. areas. Because it isn't that we all need money. It's not like they need to give money to every single person on the PHCN um, list, but I'm sure they can f start to find areas within that database. I think the truth of the matter is that we're just not working. If, we, if they are, they're not coming out to say it, but since they've been donating money and all that stuff, I've not seen any transparency as to where this money is going, as to what they're doing. Or if this who's money even is trying actually to actually being donated? Yeah, like who's who's actually working? Like we, there's a there's a news outlet in China that I follow. They literally start calling colleagues out. This person wants to um, say thank you to this person for working on tracing these people. Want to say this, thank you to this person. Well, I don't see Nigerians, anyone doing anything. I'm just seeing like COVID-19 and we need food, but I'm not like, and we're donating millions and we're not donating millions and this person versus this person, but I'm not they actually they, seeing they any work. They usually have a press briefing in Abuja. I don't know if that's weekly or daily now, because each time I turn on um, some channel, you know, I, I see them reading out some things. I'm like, is this, what are you briefing every day? What are you talking about? Yeah. What, and it, it is not even very clear for you to understand what yeah. they are doing. So I think, like you said, we need transparency. So can Mark and react to being called insensitive for saying China should be fined for the coronavirus pandemic? She said, and I quote, who started it, who contained it, who is now profiting from it? When I said the world should find China, I was called insensitive. Nations should wake up and fix their economy, build factories, empower your people, so we all don't depend on their economy. Happy quarantine, end of quote. Um, you know, there, there have been different conspiracies out there about what really this COVID-19 was aimed to achieve. Um, and one of that conspiracy is a trade war between China and the U.S. And, and we all know China is, is, is the biggest market of the world. And its only competition right now is, is the U.S. And if we were to go by that conspiracy, um, Turkey Makinwa is not completely off by what she said. But again, would they apologize? I think she's consuming too I much mean, conspiracy, basically. Because well, it's, it's not yeah. like she has insider yes. information. Uh, yeah. She's just you know, consuming yes. too many wrong you know, things online. I and guess. then if, if the few videos that have been going around again, showing how this came about and what the aim was meant to achieve, then I think China owes the entire world an apology. 
you know, I think it's, it's, still, it's still, it's still, it's still, it's still, it's still a conspiracy. Yeah. You know, but again, she said something that is very pertinent, which is the, the most important part. Countries should start focusing on building their economy. She started with that and delete you know, everything else on top of that. For you know, me. countries <laughs> and still can, she she has a way of trying to pass the message she wants to pass across. You know, and what also I mean? making sure she you talk about her. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the essence for you to talk about it. Mm. You know, it's it's about it's about the it's about the traffic. I'm not really. I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't I don't really like when um, conspiracy theories are being brought up to high platforms. To be honest with you, I think you should burn that thing down. Did we did we apologize for HIV and AIDS? Did we apologize for Ebola? Did we have a lot? There's a lot of viruses that come from other places as well, and it's not. Swine flu that killed the most people in the history of history is coming from America. Who apologized to America? Yeah, which is why I said I don't think it's an apology we need. I think it's a, a, a better explanation as to how exactly have you been able to almost become corona free? What did you do? Yeah. And how exactly but, uh, but, did this thing But again, I, I don't those, think Tokyo when necessarily meant that China should really, like, literally apologize. I, I don't, she, I, I don't think I don't think that's what really she's saying. I think for us, she just wanted to use that she, to drive a point home. She just wanted to blame them, basically. Exactly. And then Nigeria should fix up her economy. Let's start I think producing, that's what it is. Know, and I, it, I don't know why people are so, like, making this thing so mystical as to why um, China would be able to get rid of coronavirus. Like, I feel like it's very basic. You saw them build, an, a, 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 like, four a hospitals in, like, four days. These are people that are communists. They're not democratic. They're not telling you, we think you should go to your house. They will literally fly you into your homes. They don't respect humans as much as other people do. They are very strict and they are very effective. They've always been effective. They're one of the only co um, co um, countries that are still doing communism because of how effective they are. I, know, I mean, we, we can argue on the tactics they used to implement this effectiveness um, based on humanitarianism and decency or whatever. But the truth of the matter is that China gets their things done. They have a strong economy. Of course, they will bounce back. Of course. Um, and America, the reason why Americans are... Um, still struggling with that, as, as Americans will even tell you, they did not quarantine themselves early. They did not do social distancing. They're still not doing social distancing. The, pro the president still wants to open it in Easter so that people can go shopping. Like, let's be real. Um, to, so uh, the only thing I'm going to say about China that I can put my fingers to is that they are not transparent. Because they don't practice democracy, they don't owe anybody any explanation. The one thing I can say that it's not a conspiracy theory is that they refuse to give numbers early. They were not honest about the fact that there is a lot of people and Chinese people travel. So they spread this thing. If, if it was someone like, someone like Nigeria, well, I've said it since, guys. Okay, we have an issue, blah, 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 blah. Cut the borders quickly to, to prevent the, the virus from spreading because not everyone is as effective as... Um, uh, in dealing with viruses like like China's economy will be able to do. So I get where she's coming from in that aspect. Uh, you can still point fingers, but let's be really careful so we don't even start to like um, create this like um, division because we don't need that. I think coronavirus is trying to teach us the opposite. They've been trying to be honest with their vaccines. They've been sharing all the things that we've been talking about, hydro, whatever, chloroquine or whatever. That's all coming from China. But now I'm seeing people saying the mask is polluted. The this is that. And all these conspiracy yeah, theories. Let's the just burn that some, down um, and keep, kids that, that going keep things to, in focus. Was the American, they found that it was already coronavirus um, Contaminate. I mean, those things. I, I don't know what to believe. Let's even just use just, our brains. How long does yeah. the virus stay me, in there? How long does me, it take to travel day, before then you go, and then it's still living in there? Like, is it a living being that like has it, a heart? Like, she's, she's made she's made the most valid point there. After all of this is blown over, the Nigerian government or economies of the world should see how they can you know self sufficient self sufficient yeah. stop relying on on, on China. China. You know, of China built its economy to the extent it is right now. China is self sufficient. They can do without the rest of the world. The world needs China. That China doesn't necessarily need the world right now. So it is. You know, so not only able to bring our economy oh, well, to that. that can be debated. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we all yeah. they, they, they we need each we need other. Every There's country, no way. Even yeah. China yeah. needs the, the reason world why they are building to be what they are today. No, I mean, that's strong is because to, they want you to buy them. And because, because there's a market. Extent, yes. To an extent, mm -hmm. to an extent, the things that they, they, they self produce in there, they don't need other economies to bring it into them. Okay. The, the, the economies of the world need China, largely. All right. Think think about most of the things we use. I mean, even to to our Apple phone, to our iPhones. You know, they're produced in China. Yeah, but it's not just China. You know? like, and so at the end of the day, so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm hoping the Nigerian government would do right by by the people and by themselves to know that you know what, it's high time. The, the economy as it is is already diversified. Our issue in Nigeria is not that diversification of the economy like many people always clamor for. Is that many of these parts of the economy that have been diversified they're not adequately sufficiently funded. And so you see the oil sector always getting the most funding than every other sector of the economy. So it's high time they begin to fund these other sectors and make sure we begin to self-produce. Let's let's preach the doctrine of made in Nigeria, by Nigeria, where Nigeria. That's how China got to where they are today. We can't. 
It's, it's just the bloody templates of the world who have done it successfully. But again, because of the corruption, because of the sabotage amongst us, they won't want the economy of, the, of Nigeria to be what it is. Because at the end of the day, we all might be living equal and benefiting from the commonwealth that is ours, that 5% of the economy already just controls. Yeah, I hear you and I agree that we need to be self-sufficient, but I, I would still want to say that we all need each other. Mm -hmm. And um, just like the way we relate um, with ourselves, even on this table, all fingers cannot be equal. And if um, America's strength is um, COP, for example, the strength comparative of China advantage, could be that's what it's called. water. Uh, you know, is, yeah, is comparative so, advantage. Um, yeah. I just hope that this whole conspiracy thing dies down a bit. Do we need explanation? Yes, we probably need explanation, but we need to move on and be united and um, fight this with one voice because it is scary. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, there will be more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Apala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like woo. <laughs> Welcome back to Sister Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Raising kids is my greatest accomplishment. This is coming from Eminem. He said, when I think about my accomplishments, that's probably the thing I'm most proud of, um, is being able to raise kids. It is important to keep your kids grounded when they are in situations like I have. It is very important, end of quote. Okay, Benny. I'm bringing this to you, hold on, because, you know, we've had the conversation of... Oh, it's no, let me just talk, let me just <laughs> no, talk. No, let's start it. Is marriage a, an, an, a, an achievement yeah. and all that? Now, looking at it from the side of raising kids, now, do, do, you, think, do you think you agree with Eminem, first and foremost? That's, that's, his, own, that's his own perspective for me. For me, my kids are a blessing to my life. I mean, um, I, I'm grateful for them every morning I wake up, I see them, to be able to be a father to them. Um, so I'm so privileged. Um, do, I, do I think sometimes I come short? Yes. And for Eminem, it's pretty much different because Eminem has been, I think from, from the get-go, always, is, I've always seen the family side of Eminem from the very start because of his daughter, Ailey. Shocking to see that she's you know, like in mid-twenties right now. And so um, it, was, it was so much back and forth between him and, his, and Ailey's mom. I can't remember her name. Her name can't come to my mind right now. So there was a whole lot of unwholesomeness and dysfunction that characterized that relationship. And so if Eminem is coming and say this Ailey is his biggest achievement, then he's... Not just Ailey, it's Ailey, the other you know, nieces. Yeah. Um, Ailey is the only person I'm, I'm, I know so much about because mm -hmm. he, he used that so well in the song and all of that stuff. Okay for him you know, to and say. so if, he, if, if that's how he feels about it, then it's, 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 it's his right to say how he feels about his daughter and about his family. If it's an achievement okay, for him, then... Okay, let me put this in another way. <laughs> so do you think that... I, I know... Um, as parents, parents can only try to raise a, a mentally, physically, morally stable child, right? right? But sometimes you do all you can and they just Refuse. choose their yeah. part, right? Yeah. But if at the end of the day, I mean, your child, for example, gets to say 26 and you can look back and say, this is a fine young man who understands, um, who has a, a good level of moral yeah. standards and is successful in his business. And would you be able to say I achieved something in life raising this son that of I mine? achieved something in life because I raised my boy, yeah. like my responsibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I'm gonna say that, I just said it, I'm gonna say that's an achievement. I mean, oh, it's, okay. it was my responsibility to do. And so, um, what would be an achievement it's, for it's, you? it's a job. Is it is it is an achievement like saying a job well done, saying I did a good work? Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Then I did a good job. I mean, but I won't characterize it as an achievement. What would you it characterize was my, as an achievement? It was my responsibility. Oh, you agree? Let's not let's not make this about right. Benny. You know, exactly, you know what? He, that's what he does. I, I guess he doesn't you know. see family and marriage and children as achievements. So, okay. what do you think about? Um, for me, it was a big deal hearing it from a man. It was for because me as well. if it was a woman that said this, we'd be like, oh, what else especially alternative. 
um, yeah. feminist or ag agro feminist like will say what are you doing with your life how can this be just an achievement you're more than this blah 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 um so if coming from a man i'm really happy that he's saying that it's not easy and i think it, it shows from when a man gets on top of this conversation that it takes a lot of effort i think a lot of men in general are not that involved in raising kids so when you see one that does they value it more so than than normal and that's why he's saying something like this so i really appreciate that he's coming out to say that it's his big and this is somebody that has won many awards mm -hmm. has mingled with high caliber he's not a nobody he's not a he's not a house husband yeah. so for him to categorize that it's a big deal now like with the conversation that you're trying <laughs> you're trying to bring up about marriage and things i think people always just confuse achievements on personal private levels to societal ones like mm -hmm. i don't think we need to then give um, Eminem an award as a society to say well done sir for raising your kids I don't think I need to do that I think in his own personal life he can give that he can tap himself and on the shoulder and he's done that but I don't need to give him accolades for that um, and the same thing goes for marriage like I don't think I need to say oh well you got married we should celebrate you for that I don't think so but you can decide to celebrate that achievement and all that stuff so I'm happy that he's doing that from what um, Benny was also saying about his upbringing, I mean, he's always raps about that, that he's had a quite a dysfunctional upbringing and even a dysfunctional relationship, marriage to start. I don't know if they're married, relationship when they were starting earlier. So it's nice to see that he's he's made, uh, like, he hasn't used it as an excuse to be, to be complacent. He's, if anything, he's proud of the, the um, achievements that he's been able to do and seeing his kids become um, something that he, he's, he's proud of. I feel like that's really awesome. It was a fresher breath of just reading that story, to be mm, honest. There's always a, a bit of um, uneasiness in the air when you have to decide between luck, grace, um, hard work, achievements, and things like mm. that. Because sometimes you say, oh, I worked hard for this, and someone will show you someone has worked harder and say, mm. what exactly did you do? And I think that can play around in this case. Yeah. But I like how you put it that we can ask ourselves define our achievements and pat ourselves on the back, not necessarily waiting for the next person to say you've done a good job. Right. And I think that if definitely hopefully i get to that point where i have a child that is all grown up and all put together i'm, mm. I'm, I'm not going to say if i have a child that um probably has some um personal issues they're dealing with let me just put it that way I, I can't throw the child away yeah. it's still my child right yeah. but if i'm where luck comes in if i'm lucky yeah. enough and i have the grace to have a child who's yeah. Well, level-headed yeah. and doing right by herself, myself, and the society, yeah. or himself. Um, if, if that's a boy, then yeah. of course I'll be able to say yes. This is a big achievement yeah. for me because it's a big deal. So yeah. I'm happy that this is coming from someone like Eminem, basically. Okay, so moving on. Um, Rihanna's experience of racism has not changed since moving to UK. In an interview with British Vogue, she says um, racism. She says of racism in London, it's either blatant, which is becoming more and more of a norm or it's underlying where people don't even know they're being obvious about it yeah. yeah so was there a notion that racism in the uk is um better than in the us of course because i think america has this tendency just like how they're doing with coronavirus they like to make their problem everybody's problem i don't know if that makes sense so um, I'm, 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 I think it's just because they're really powerful as well and they influence a lot of countries and what you know we're kind of connected to America yeah. in, in, a, in a strong way mm -hmm. if it's not our cultural our identity or our music or entertainment yeah. all that type of stuff um, so when you have issues like uh, Black Lives Matter and police brutality and all that stuff it starts to feel like America is the only place that has that, that, that has that when we talk about mass incarceration all those examples all those heavy heavy examples that are in history in today's world is mostly from America so there is a like I guess it's naive because we haven't been anywhere else when we think that other places are not as bad because they're not as reported you know and they're not as they, they don't affect me personally like i've media. never heard yeah exactly so um i think what she what she when she was making that thing from what i got especially with the comments and how she was engaging is that she was even saying that there's a, just almost a, just as much police brutality in the uk that the, than uh, as there is in america which for me as an audience in africa was like brand new news because i only heard of it in america so i think that's what she's trying to say and she's also saying that even with engaging it's kind of scary for misha to be honest if someone like rihanna who is ambiguous first of all she doesn't even look that black um and has that much power can engage with it then it makes me wonder how is the like lower class female like i can imagine a female muslim that's black or something those are three heavy minorities in one like then how does her life look like so it's really scary i mean covid 19 can teach us a lot of things but it's not gonna heal everything racism will still be will still be there um and she's just bringing that into conversation 
I think the issue of racism can never, never be underscored, regardless of whatever level um, it's been displayed. Mm -hmm. um, same thing goes for police brutality, wherever it is in the UK, in the US, in Nigeria, it, it is brutality. And we can never underscore, you know, um, the, the damage they do to, to individuals. For me, I'm just, my surprise, yeah, I think I'm a little bit taken aback that it's, it's coming from Rihanna. One would expect someone like her to, to not be in, um, in, 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 within the parameters of, of what she just said. You know, but unfortunately, that's to tell the whole world, whatever I like it or not, wherever you are. Even in Nigeria, there's racism. I mean, you walk into a store sometimes, that a white a, a person of different color walks in, there's a different attention. The, the waiter suddenly begins to give to that person they're giving to you. So even in your own country, so we can never, it's, it's not a bloodline, it's, it's staring us in the face, mm. you know? So it's just taking a whole different dimension these days. It's no longer the plantation days. It's, it's in so many things, it's in who owns the media, it's in who owns the sports, I mean. And so at the end of the day, uh, we just have to find a way to um, talk less about it. Margaret Freeman was in an interview and said um, Black History Day was the, the, an interview on Black History Day. Then the interviewer asked him, why are you not talking about it? Why are you not celebrating Black History Day? Now I asked him, would you want, like, what, 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 where are you from? He said, he's Jew. Like, would you want a, a Jew History she Day? Did. He said, no, like, why wouldn't you want it? Because um, that he doesn't see the need for it. So Morgan Freeman was like, I don't need a Black History Day because all that does to me, he t it's take me back to a time in my life, in my history, my ancestral history, I really don't want to be part of, I don't want to remember. And so I'm beginning to feel, you know what, the more they talk about it, it's like the, there's a profit, there's a gain for me somewhere that, that at the end of the day defeats the entire purpose of what it is mm -hmm. um, we should be focusing it on and not focusing it on. Mm -hmm. So to solve a problem, it, it's okay to identify what the problem is. But there's so much focus now still on the problem. All they talk about is the problem. And so you're propagating the problem, not so much of the solution. I and disagree. How do, we, how do we end racism? Yeah, I think they're you know, So just, the conversation should be how, how, do we re how to end racism. And not so much, reduced, it's already known. It there is racism. It totally you know? ended. But from what you're saying with what Morgan Freeman said yeah. in that interview, I feel like there will always be um, um, three sets of people. One who will feel like Morgan Freeman and say, you know what, don't take me back. Um, to these days, I mm. don't want to hear it. Let's think of how to move forward. Is it don't, like, don't give me a day. Every yeah, day is yeah. my day. He's you basically know? Yeah. not wanting to think about it. And I think that's how I feel when the conversations of Biafra come up. And I say, mm. why do you always want to go back to remind us that um, someone died and something happened? And can we look for a way to move forward and not think about that? And some people will feel like you're trying to downplay it. Yeah. Um, because because in actuality, so most of the, when that happens, people, yeah. it instigates something in yeah. you. You won't so, hate the next one. Man, yes. you know? So the people that are downplaying it are, or those that want to will say you are downplaying to another category because they feel like they've not been properly apologized to, yeah. they've not been properly integrated exactly. into the society, yeah. and that they are still um, not being given the respect they deserve. Yeah. It's an and then you just there, are, very there, yes. there is the, the other people are the ones that say, you know what? How can we bring everybody together and also yeah. make sure that people understand the struggle, yeah. which is why they keep you the conversation going. It, yeah. So sometimes I feel like we all need to understand these three sets of people yeah. bring them together and find a solution but like you rightly said we know the problem yeah. exactly we need to hammer more on the solution yeah. like how do we the, move the, forward the two, from yeah, this? Yeah. The, two, the two last people you talk about that should be our focus you know i mean hey what do we need to do to get these people more inclusive integrated and mm. not so much about it's been, been talked about I, you know I, 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 to be honest with you, I, I disagree. I think that America has made huge, a progress. huge progress, and it's based on conversation, solely based on conversation. Um, even Netflix, Netflix did a woman's, um, um, that's the last thing I can remember, a woman's um, special day. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I, well, Morgan Freeman, I have to check that because Morgan Freeman is like my role model. For him to say that so just sounds really bizarre to me. But you need a day. Why, why does it sound you need bizarre? A, you need, he doesn't you, want a black history day. I'm, I'm, black I'm, history replying, to, I'm, replying, to, I'm replying to that, guys. I'm having my opinion. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but that was his opinion right now. You say it sounds bizarre to me. That yeah, was his opinion. opinion. Yeah, yeah, so he's entitled to his opinion why he said he doesn't want a black history month. I'm responding month. to, 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 to that. Yeah, yeah, but you don't need to say his opinion is bizarre. It's him. I mean, he's, he's, he's at the forefront of it. He experienced it. You okay. didn't. You didn't. Okay, so. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think that it's important to have special days because life is busy and not everyone talks about everything. Once of, like, that's how you have albino day or you have, just like to give a reminder that, okay, guys, we need to talk about this. It's important for me not to be silenced and I don't like the, any, any idea of silencing to me doesn't work out, but 
is there a point that we should balance it out? The problem is with, with, with that is that human beings like bad news. So when uh, a, an NGO has successfully taken out all the boys on the streets in one suburb, we, don't hear. We, we hear about it, but we don't hear about it as much. Mm -hmm. But then they kill one guy, then it's a big news. But that doesn't take away from the fact that the society we live in is not giving solutions. We are. We are diversifying our, our media contents. We're diversifying our movies. We're diversifying our stories. We're diversifying our governments. There's a lot of women in power, people in people of color in power. Like There is progress. There is a lot of progress. We're not where we were before. And because we are talking about it, because we're reminding our younger generation through Black History Day, for example, teaching them in school that, guys, we had powerful people. We had J.K. Um, J.S. Walker. We had women who did awesome things. You know, so that for me has to keep on going and so i think the same thing with biafra maybe the problem is that for people who want to talk about it so you we don't cj walker right? cj walker cj walker yes cool. the, pro the pro maybe the problem that i can see here is that maybe when you are communicating that problem it's done too aggressively because it's such an emotional thing i think people can get very personal and then you lose um, meaning in translation or whatever but um let me just keep going <laughs> <laughs> okay so um let's go on a quick break but when we come back we'll have one more story to discuss Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling alright. Still buy. That's how they look myself. Minimal are you? Mm. Akpala music is for mature-minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like. Sleeping early. Sleeping early. Welcome back. This is Silty Time on Plus TV Africa. So, Joro Muffin has, um, Joro Muffin, I mean, is it Joro Ulu Muffin? He's, he's a popular Instagram relationship blogger and he's giving his tips once again. And this um, set of tips he has reeled out, he's apparently trying to tell some people how to know if their partner is cheating. And I think um, the problem with this for me, uh, there are so many problems, but the major one is that it is kind of um, um, one sided. So, you're st he's telling us that if you're how do I say this? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, if you're married um, and your wife has a sex toy, and the sex toy cannot be placed side by side with the, the man's equipment to be of the same size, then it means that um, she's cheating because uh, she's not satisfied with what she has. I think, I think, he, I think for me, I think it's, it's just a joke. He was just joking about this whole thing. Does I mean, he joke? I, I want to believe. Well, he's, if he jokes, he's the one, I think everything he says he's is the, a it's joke. The one, it's the one everybody goes to. Where he, amazingly, I mean, he seems to be like an, an authority. He has occupies a premise of authority when it comes to relationship in Nigeria. Amazingly, well, only, once it comes you to know, people that have relationship problems, problematic yeah. relationships relationship. in Nigeria. You know, yeah. and, let's put it that way. Yeah. And, and it's for me, it's pretty much cliche. But I, I don't think that should be taken. Too seriously, it could just be like he made it a statement. It could be just variety, you know. Right? It could, it could. Uh, women, women have sex stories, and you can't, you can't deny anyone. No, he's not saying not having. He's saying, saying yes. that the if, size, your size is bigger than yours. And, and uh, that could be at the end of the day. I mean, variety. That, that, Do you think I don't that if think somebody? So. That's why, like, he, he must be. He should be joking about this. He must be joking the about it. The writer sounded very serious to me. You know, because he at the end of the day, you a personal deep from his heart advice. You know, if, <laughs> he was if, quite if, if my partner decides to experience something Bigger. larger than what she's getting mm -hmm. and decides to do that through a sex toy, mm -hmm. I, I, sh I don't think I should have a problem with that. With that. I don't. It's, I don't think I should have a problem with it. Do at you all. think your partner should actually get something bigger? It's a prerogative. I'm not yeah. it, I, I, considering. It's, it's, <laughs> this conversation it's, is so crazy. Do, do I think? Uh, then she, she's the woman she wants to get herself injured okay, in so, so many ways. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Um, uh, um, yeah, what were you going to um, say? I, this, this, um, to me, this idea comes from a, an insecure place. Um, if people understood the concept of pleasure, then they wouldn't write that because I can get pleasure from so many other things doesn't mean that I don't enjoy the pleasure with you. It's kind of like how my favorite yeah. food is pasta. But when I eat pizza, I enjoy pizza. But that doesn't mean that I, 
I'm not satisfied with Pata. That, do you get what I mean? Mm. So for me, it's, it, it, it seems like his masculinity is being threatened by the idea of, of that. Because, and, and that surprises me because usually people who are like that don't even like sex toys in general to begin with. They're just like, if I'm not the one doing it, then, you know, nobody else. So I'm surprised he's saying, oh, you can do it, but then don't make it bigger or don't make it smaller or whatever. Um, the way we, at least for, for I'm going to speak for myself, the way women at least interact with sex isn't, if it's not about, if it's no longer about the person that we're doing it with, I don't think toys really matter. We can't fall in love with a bigger size dildo. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to leave my fiance or my husband or my boyfriend for a big size dildo. So it, it's not supposed to be a competition. Um, and he's, the, when I now say out loud, maybe that's why I need to agree with you that maybe he's joking because it makes, that's that's it it's actually It's got to be a joke. Um, no if you, know, you want to again, dismiss this as a joke, yeah. everything Joe Murphy puts out is a joke. So. But, yeah. but should, shouldn't, be, shouldn't be seen that way. It's arguable. This is it, right? And again, on, on the real though, if, if you have men, Nigerian men, most Nigerian men, because of our conserve and reserve nature, we're not open up to you. Things like it's amazing. I mean, you know, open up to things like sex stories in the bedroom, and that is still a big problem for many homes. You know, mm. where um, the wife feel you know we can explore, and so if a man feels threatened by the presence of a dildo, I mean, maybe larger yeah, than larger than the size, Benny, then he has an insecurity <laughs> problem he needs to deal with. Okay, so like Benny and Ife Omar has rightly said, please don't feel threatened by a toy. And that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this conversation by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Arrow TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, go to my amazing co-workers, Ife Omai and Benny Ag, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay home and stay safe.